Hello, everybody. Um, it's a few minutes after noon, so we're going to go ahead and get started with our new special series today. Um, but before we do so, my name is Nicole Ryle, and I'm the Director of Development and Public Programs here at CIHS. CIHS Enlighten is the fairly new sector of our institution that offers certificate programs, continuing education, and community offerings like the one here today. Today is an especially exciting day for our community because it's the launch of our new 2023 book series, Teachings, Conversations in Consciousness. And we're so excited to each month over the course of this new year, host uh, inspiring authors who publish in the topics of consciousness studies and mind, body, spirit pursuits. Our mission here at CIHS is to, pro excuse me, to provide <clears throat> an academic experience that bridges the gap between science and spirituality with transformative education and a transcendent experience. And we are so looking forward to sharing the series with you each month. Today, we are honored to launch this series with local Southern California author, sound healer, and educator, Dion Mandel. Dion and CIHS trustee, Anne-Marie Cushing, will discuss Dion's book, Ancient Sounds for a New Age, as well as the joys and benefits of sound healing. And I just wanted to remind you that these uh, events are made possible by your donations, and we thank you for your support. Today, Dion is going to gift a free ebook to the highest donor. You can see this code you can text to listed on my screen, or I'll also provide a couple uh, links in the text box throughout our presentation. Um, and then I also just wanted to let you know that there will be time for Q&A um, after Anne-Marie and Dion have their uh, conversation, probably about one o'clock. So now I'd like to turn it over to our CIHS president, Dr. Thomas Brophy. Thanks so much, Nicole. Yes, so welcome to this very special California Institute for Human Science special 2023 book series live event. This is our first of this uh, 2023 book series live events. And I'm delighted to be able to announce uh, today's presenters who are very much connected with CIHS's mission and the philosophy of CIHS founder, Dr. Hiroshi Motoyama. Diane Mandel is the only Tibetan bowl practitioner certified through the state of California. She's a member of Sound Healers Association and the Healing Music Organization. She's a Sounds True recording artist and practitioner featured in the video series, Dao, Living in Balance, to be released in both China and the USA soon. As a recognized authority on Tibetan bowl sound healing, uh, she has appeared on NPR television and radio. Her major new book, the subject of today, is Ancient Sounds for a New Age. And Diane will be in dialogue today with our own Anne-Marie Cushing, who is a visionary architect, educator, and advocate for health reform. She's an advisor to national and international health organizations providing leadership and strategic envisioning of health reform. She served as co-chair of the executive committee board of the uh, famous and extraordinary New York Open Center. Most fortunately for us at CHS, Emory is a trustee of CHS. So now I'll pass it back to Nicole to introduce a beginning meditation for us. Thanks so much, Thomas. Yes, and now we'd like to officially begin with a short sound healing meditation for you guys at home uh, with Dion, and then they'll jump into conversation. So thanks so much.
Thank you all so much. And, and now I'd like to turn it over to Anne-Marie and we'll get going with some questions and dive into Dion's book, which also is available on Amazon if you'd like to purchase it. I'll, I'll pop a link in the chat as well. Anne-Marie, yeah. you're still on mute, Anne-Marie. Good afternoon, everyone. Delighted to see you all and Happy New Year to everyone. We're delighted to be here in our new series, the teaching series, and for Dion to, to speak to us um, as our first guest speaker on, on sound and, and the variables of sound healing using ancient sounds for a new age. And um, I just thought I'd start off, uh, Dion, with maybe um, the back of your book, actually, um, which you know, you did an appendix of the various different sound healing pioneers. And one individual that you had prefaced at the very beginning was Donna Carey. And she says that sound has the power to heal our wounds, ignite our spirit, change consciousness, uh, reunite us with the divine uh, harmonies and rhythms of the universe. And through this unified vision and increased ability to hear the sounds of the cosmos, within ourselves, our access to health and wholeness. And so what I thought we would do and begin with is maybe just getting a little bit of a, an idea about uh, a little bit of your past, uh, working with polarity and also, you know, I know that you also are a counselor and this book of yours is really a representation of all these variables. But a very big emphasis is also the, um, uh, these ancient tools that you really write about, which um, uh, I thought that we would discuss, such as the Ganta, the Tingshas, you know, the chimes, the very, the various different bowls that you use. And maybe if you'd like to begin with and give us an introduction about um, these various tools that people may or may not know about. Sure, of course, with pleasure. Um, well, I guess the first thing is that, uh, as with everything, there's a beginning, a middle, and uh, a, a going forward. And um, these tools were created, and they have, and they are all sound instruments and vibrational instruments, but they all have a very, very specific task. Um, and one of the tasks, uh, the very first task, is uh, comes from the instrument called the tingshas. And I think many of you who do yoga or sound healing have seen tingshas, but many of you might not know what they are all about. Um, when you walk into a room, when you start a project, there's a starting, there's, a, there's that moment where, where we begin. And the task of the tingshas is to awaken, bring to attention. But awaken, they awaken very specific energies in us. They awaken the energy of community, or the crown chakra, truth, the throat chakra, and compassion, the heart of the Buddha, the, the heart chakra. And why is that important? And that is because when we are doing Tibetan bowl sound healing, we don't want to push any energy or anything away, out of the way. What we want to do is awaken, reawaken, and embrace whatever needs to be embraced, even uh, challenged or difficult energies, because those are the energies that need to remember community truth and compassion, sort of like, uh, like Swiss cheese, uh, and then and then make making it into a whole making it into wholeness. So the vibrations um, of these instruments are instruments of awakening dormant energies of community truth and compassion, and that's why they are often or should be played in series of three, six, nine, and so they also indicate that uh, something is about to happen, like a trumpet announcing doo -doo 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 -doo, uh, a very special uh, a very special event is about to happen, an awakening, a healing. Um, and so that's, that's part of the task of the Tingshas. It's also an instrument that 
is there to do a diagnostic. So when when there's a, an individual, we play the 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 tingshas in a very specific manner, and we are able to receive different um, variations of sound and vibration, and that gives us an indication of what's happening in somebody's body. Um, another instrument uh, in the sacred sound family is the ganta. It's a little, yes, it's a little bell. And um, it has a special job. It represents the divine feminine, uh, which means, what is that? What is a divine feminine? That's really um, the energies of gestation, creativity, wisdom, unconditional love, the cycles of creativity. So they energize, this instrument energizes those instruments, uh, those uh, attitudes and, and energies within us. Uh, the ganta also, uh, and I will say the dorje, which I will explain later, is an instrument of moving energy. So the tingshas awaken energy, the ganta moves energy, and it moves energy in many different ways. Uh, for example, you can break up energy by clacking it. And there are different ways to clack it. There's a different ways to break up energy. With all of these instruments, it's really a, a very big uh, spectrum of how you do what you do. Because when I say breaking up energy, there is the whole gamut between an explosion with dynamite and, if you imagine, the delicateness of a, uh, a marble sculptor, that he has to break up that big rock of marble, but if he does it too hard, it's going to explode it, and that's not what he wants to do. So all of these instruments, all of the way that is they're played is from like, waking up a sleeping baby to getting your teenager to clean his room after you've asked him five times. Uh, so that whole gamut of what you bring to the instrument, uh, that's something that you need, that needs to be understood, heard, and practiced so that there's a lot of skill in how are you going to break up energy. Um, there's another way that is much more soothing, and that's singing, a ganta. And yet there's another way, which is also striking a ganta. It's very delicate and using patterns of sacred geometry. So that's, that's one of the instruments of sacred sound, is awaken and then begin to move, now the dorje is also an instrument, but it's not an instrument of sound, but it is an instrument that complements the divine feminine because the dorje represents a divine masculine. And that is uh, one side of the dorje represents the mundane, everyday piece of life, the, the you know, going to work, getting up, buying groceries, all of that part of life. The other, the other side represents uh, the noumenal part of life, the invisible, the sacred, the unseeable, untouchable, but deeply felt spiritual side. And they meet in the center, in around. So this is like you're working with uh, duality, moving into non-duality. And it represents the divine masculine, the energies, the characteristics of strength in all the in all the guises of strength, physical strength all the way up to spiritual strength uh, and compassion, and the ability to bring into physical form the heart's desire of the divine feminine. So pierce, piercing the veil of veil of illusion and bringing into physical form. Um, so it's an instrument of intention. So we place it on the body in specific ways to direct energy out of the body or to direct energy into the body. Uh, that's a part. So we have, we have awakening energy, 
and we have moving energy and then the bowls and the bowls there there are several different types of bowls and they also have specific tasks um, the bowls are teachers of the Dharma they are the instruments that really uh, help us to bring everything together they're instruments of harmonization and, al and alignment a lot of people use bowls for everything and that's really not their task their task is after energies has been awakened and moved then bring them into harmony and I always love to talk about like a car you know you you put the ignition on in the car and you start to put that car into gear and you start moving it and then it's going down the highway and the bowls are the going down the highway uh, nice and and steadily um, so a little bit about the bowls um, there are many different kinds of bowls uh, and today I'm going to introduce you to two types of bowls and this is a bowl, it's called a Jambadi bowl. And you can see from the bowl uh, that it's got a nice large um, opening. And the way it's formed, it, it's formed kind of like a, an open lotus flower. Uh, it's a Jambadi. A Manapuri is the same type of bowl, but it's smaller. But you can still see that it's opening, the opening of it is, is the, same, the same shape. Um, but just smaller, and then they they get smaller and smaller. And the that bowl, the Jambadi and the Manapuri bowls, represent um, a shifting of consciousness, um, but in in a different way. Because we all our consciousness always expands in different ways for different people, and some people have uh, their aha moments and they reach. A shift in consciousness through prayer or through meditation or through gathering of knowledge like uh, like Sarah, the goddess Sarasvati um, that's one kind of you know it's an expansive it's gentle um, some some of us um, and I think all of us at one point or the other in our lives need a wake-up call from the universe and the wake-up call can come in the form of a car crash, of a death in the family, or a friend's death, or a divorce, or you know some really strong um, event that catapults us into a whoa, something's got to change. And those bowls are called Thada body bowls, and you can see that the Thada body is very different. It's really much more up and down. And here's a little one. Uh, we always have big versions and little versions, and the the base is much smaller, but um, but it's almost the same diameter. It's a little bit larger at the top, but it's it's much more up and down, and rather than that beautiful opening flower uh, form. And why is that? That that the 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 um, sound moves differently it moves more directly into the body and so when we need a wake-up call we need um, we need energy to move more forcefully and more directly into our bodies um, to give you an example of that um, maybe maybe uh, somebody comes in and they're very very angry uh, because they've just gone through a terrible divorce well I would love to uh, work with uh, the opening of the heart bowl and the opening but it's very hard to open a rock so if they have a heart of stone I would probably work with something that goes more directly and gently gently mm, moves the energy until a place where they're capable of different of compassion of a different way of different way of perceiving the situation and themselves within that so that is just a, a teeny tiny uh, overview of some of the sacred sound instruments that I use. Are you there? <laughs> 
So sorry. Um, you are a, an awakener uh, of perception. And I think that it's so important for um, uh, us to understand that through, let's say, the variable representations that you have in your book, there are many uh, case studies that you have pulled together and you have demonstrated in here. Can you tell us how you decide to choose different dynamics? Because let's say you mentioned divorce, but there are many aspects that can fall under divorce that people may have trauma, grief, um, sorrow, whatever. But what makes it, What what? where do you begin with generally so that people can get centered to where it gives them all that awakening, that movement and that harmony that you're looking at? Well, we, we, the whole purpose of doing these instruments is, uh, is about an awakening, a shift in, uh, I would say, a spiritual awakening that affects our physical body and all parts of our body, our emotional body, and our cognitive body. And so um, we, we learn through repetition. And so it's not, you know, it's not just one one type of bowl, one specific protocol that's going to do it. I, when I work with people, I have a whole, um, I have a, a whole spectrum of protocols that uh, I use to get to to get information from them uh, as to what it is that they most need. And I work with uh, core energies, and not symptoms. So if somebody is coming in and uh, is distressed because of trauma, uh, that might be different than being distressed because of anger. Uh, and yes, those are, that's, and that's very subtle, and I would have to work with trauma uh, differently than I would have to work with anger. And that is, that is part of, um, that is part of a whole spectrum of uh, getting information from someone through, um, I have a system that I use in the beginning of a sound healing session that really brings someone into present moment uh, and then helps them to um, it helps them to identify what the core issue is that's manifesting in one way or the other or maybe even in several ways because that's how core issues manifest they don't usually just manifest in one way if somebody has uh, a core issue of lack of self-worth that's going to come out in the relationships that they choose it's going to come out in the work uh, how they work and how they are perceived at work it's going to it's just going to come out in many many different ways so that's that's the import that's a really important aspect of figuring out what to do you know where the issue lies and then how to do what is needed and would you say that um when people come to you for instance and they have a specific issue that they're they're looking to heal and work with do you um do you know at that particular time you know specifically how long that will take or is it you know for them to come to sessions or is it something that you work with because each and every one you know manifests their their wellness process differently well People, I, I say that people need to have at least four to six sessions because that's how behavioral change works. As I said in the beginning, we learn through repetition. So knowing something isn't just enough. I mean, knowing that eating a box of chocolates is going to make me sick isn't usually enough to stop people from overeating something that's not good for them or from, you know, smoking so there's there's a whole gamut of um, one of them is the really the realization of what's not working or what's causing the issue, and the other one is a deep connection with essence, with that part of our self, our diamond self. When people touch that part of themselves, that is a lot greatly forgotten um, because of all the distractions of life. When people get back into connection with their diamond self, with their essence, then that's when a shift can occur. And so we'll do four to six sessions. In the beginning, I'm, tr I'm figuring out what's going on. 
and and they are partnering with me because they're doing homework between sessions, for example, that that are going that's going to support the work that we've done in the session. And over time, that work revolves around getting back into um, a, a more frequent a more frequent relationship and contact with that diamond self from where they are going to be able to make better choices. Well, in your book, you have so many different examples. And, uh, and what I loved also about it was that you spoke often, you know, you have certain chapters on the polarities of the body and the, the sacred chakras. You work on many levels all together. Um, with your healing process and many different modalities and such. So can you give us an example of, of, of an individual um, and, you know, even your diagrams that you have in your book of the placement of your bowls and, and also the sacred geometry of placement and such, what, what you would do for an individual that's going through an issue, um, you know, of, of self-esteem, let's say. So the first thing that I would want to do, and, and I, I like to answer your question the best I can, but it's every, every person is different. And so I have to take that into account. So it's, there's, there's um, the important thing is that there's some basic fundamentals to understand and know about how to move energy. But then there is the part that's, um, there's a lot of freedom within structure. So what I give in the book is some structures, some basic fundamental uh, structures of protocols. For example, uh, if somebody comes in with low self-esteem, um, the first thing I want to do is to, is to um, disperse that sense of self-esteem so that there's room for uh, self-worth, self-honor to come up and to be strengthened. So the first part, and probably the first couple of sessions even, might be working uh, in triads going down, uh, bringing someone into a very deep relaxation, into a very deep place of getting those um, those feelings, those emotions, uh, those sensations of lack, those uh, of shame, of guilt, of all those things that, um, and also the, the historical um, events in their life that contributed to that. So I would work, I would work with, with triads going down the body. I, you can't fill up a cup that's already full and the, that cup might be full of lack of self-worth. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. But it's not, it's not just the playing of bowls. There's just really a whole, uh, there's a whole other uh, integrated piece of that. I do a lot of work with uh, visualization. Um, when someone is in a very tasmic or deeply a meditative state, deeply relaxed that I, I get them into to begin with and their breathing is very um, regular and I can see that they're in the zone then I can introduce some words and some concepts that I'm introducing that to their subconscious not into their you know doing a laundry and going out for groceries brain I'm introducing that to a very deep part of them and that's where that's where a lot also a lot of the work goes into uh, choosing visualizations that will help them remember you know remember who they are and then the work comes to strengthening that um, and there's a whole different protocol for lifting energy and strengthening energy depending on uh, the patterns of sacred geometry. Uh, if somebody has high blood pressure, I'm definitely not going to work and do any work going up because that's just going, you know, it's fire energy. Um, the, the work that I've done in polarity has a lot of work with the different elements in the body and working with the elements in the body. 
So uh, that is something that I would uh, bring in, for example, maybe if someone had a lot of fire energy which would contribute to high blood pressure, for example, I'll need to balance that. I mean, so I would want to bring down the fire energy, but I would also want to uh, elevate the water energy to get a, a sense of flow together. Um, and so it's really, it's, you know, people ask me that question all the time, what would you do in this situation? What I would do in that situation depends on that situation in that particular person. You know, five people could come in with high blood pressure and, it, and five different reasons for that, and that's what I have to, that's what I have to get to. What, what manifested, what was the core issue that manifested in the con whatever the condition is? with that person. And so it's a combination of specific protocols, but combined with other elements to really make it powerful and, and resolve issues. Yeah, you also uh, mentioned in your book a lot about uh, the power of language as well, and you reinforce that. And I think that people mostly see sound you know, healing is just a ceremony of, as you say, bells and bowls and, and a lot of sound activity, but it actually is much more in the healing process. It's, it's coaching, as you say, it's polarities, it's all the elements, it's the chakras, it's variables of sacred geometry, all together, uh, pulled together, and, and then an understanding and a listening from the higher source and such. Um, can you tell us more about that? I mean, you have already, but Sure, sure, sure. So, so language, I mean, sound, you know, I say sound healing, it's what we say to ourselves in our brains, you know, all of that, all of the tapes that are you know, replaying all the time. And most of the time, we don't even, we're not even aware. And that's something that's really rewarding for me is when somebody walks out and realizes, oh, my God, I tell myself I'm stupid all the time. And then they're able, ba-bam, the consciousness and then they then they have some uh, ways of neutralizing that and then changing that giving themselves some uplifting and encouraging words um, but I, a lot of a lot of times people express themselves in terms of what they don't want I don't you know I don't want to have all this weight on my body anymore I, I want to lose weight well, that is um, okay. Um, that's a choice. Uh, but what's really more important is to come to that, to wait in, from a place of self honor, making choices that manifest, that reflect a sense of self honor, self knowing, self love. And when our food choices, for example, come from that place, we're going to make different choices. Um, a lot of times, uh, I'll give you an example. Somebody says, um, woman, and this is so typical um, for clients that I have, that the husbands and wives, the communication is a little bit um, different because a lot of women ask for the temperature of a situation rather than declaring what it is that they would like. Honey, you want to go to the movies tonight? No. Oh, he never wants to do anything I want to do. That is very typical versus, honey, I would really want to see this movie and I'd love it if you came with me. So one of them is forcing, is really, is really calling up your, um, your self-worth and putting it out there. This is what I want and this is how it would make me feel if I got it. Um, that's really so much stronger and whether he comes or not, you're going to go to the movies and you will have a nice time. You'll have a more wonderful time if he comes or she comes with you. You've made that declaration. And for a lot of people, making that declaration is already a huge step. I have, um, I have power language, I have a whole power language uh, protocol that helps people to um, declare and to say what it is they really want and need and how they would feel if they got it. 
and that is very uh, empowering to people but often they're not they're just not used to it so also it takes practice so that's just sort of an example of language language yeah you mentioned also um which i love um i know that uh, another fellow practitioner and colleague of yours is uh john Bellou, and he's now also he was into polarity and and sound healing but he also now is focused a lot on color and you mentioned also about color and toning and we know that color which many people maybe might not be aware that it's more of a higher vibration of sound and so maybe you can explain more about color in this whole spectrum of your work sure um well at at some points the way that i work with color because color is a higher vibration of sound and i always ask people when they've had a sound healing or in a group if i've done a concert who's seen color and hands are always going up and people see different colors and typically the colors that they see are usually colors that they need to uh, you know it, it's been shown to them that it's good to resonate with that color so they can wear that color a little bit more or they can um, look at that color a little bit more um, that's one of the ways to work I have different I don't know if you can see no you probably can't see I have a different uh, a whole bunch of different color pieces of uh, material and uh, I have color cards and when people come in I, I not the first time but as we're getting to know each other I have them choose three colors I put a whole spectrum and the first color usually represents where what's going on with them now and the second color represents uh, where they're going and the third color represents what the what the vision of where they really want to be and so there's there are different there are different definitions uh, of each color and explanation and um, so I usually take the color that they have chosen as their third color and place that on their body so that that vibration is working with the color uh, that they that they most are aspire that envisioning and aspiring to so you were mentioning some of the challenging emotions that people have and you use the variable you know aspects of both color and and um and your sacred geometry and 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 the placements and such and everyone as you say has so many different variables to how they're receptive to it and how they become moving into the awakening and the movement and the then eventual harmony state and such um i love that you you know focused on these ancient tools because they are you know representations of the fundamentals of this field of sound healing are there other tools that you use as well sure Besides working with john has got me working i work with the tuning force as well i work with the gong as well i work with the crystal pyramids as well uh, i work with uh, rain stick as well so i work with the different percussive uh, instruments uh, in both my concerts and in my private sound healing practice because mm -hmm. they they um they enhance uh, and they they help to bring well the gong is something it has its own it's ha it has its own a uh, very strong um task and work but a lot of the instruments um are working vibrationally with people and some of them i just play because it really helps people to to just lose themselves in the sound. Uh, I have some people who come in and after like three or four sessions, they'll say, "Wow, I really, I really felt that for the first time." They're so far out of their bodies that they didn't feel the the vibrations of the bowls and they're pretty strong because I'm putting bowls on their body uh, they're so distanced from their own physicality that they didn't feel it until uh, a few sessions in um, other people are just go into go into the cosmic uh, infinity uh, right away it's a it's a very big gamut but I use 
Uh, and so I use some of the instruments. I use the tuning forks to help synchronize the right and left set, um, hemispheres of the brain. Uh, I use the gong because the gong is, um, oh, it's like this, how do I explain it? A great cosmic flush. <laughs> it's really, it's very strong. Um, and that doesn't mean I have to play it very strongly, but people feel it very strongly. And so it's a really great, it's a really great instrument to play when someone has had a cathartic moment to move that energy out of their body, uh, to just really play the gong for a little while and maybe walk it down their body and really move those energies out in a very strong way. There are some, there are some visualizations and some works that I do that, for example, there's one that's called Decording, and it's really, uh, it's a visualization and it's interactive with uh, with a client where they are um, they they are bringing up a person in their life who had a negative impact on them and it's a but but someone oftentimes it's mother father brother ex-husband or but that's still that trauma of that person uh, especially if it was a, a child you know just a relationship from being a child um, even into the adult that still lives within them. And so I do this decording uh, that helps them to become, to be able to be a witness uh, rather than a victim. And it really, and it snips and it cuts the, the energetic cord. And when we do that, it's, it's very cathartic for people. Um, and then the gong is fabulous uh, instrument to move, uh, move those energies out and um, Strengthen also, strengthening uh, through toning with the gong, for example. Um, I use the gong. There are some situations where I ask people to verbalize sounds, different sounds. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, I had one client who was a cancer patient, and um, she really, she was really having a tough time going to chemotherapy. Well, if you're going to do chemotherapy, then you might as well be open to it. Might as well not have some energies pushing away the treatment. You need to be able to receive the treatment. But she really hated going to it. So one of the things that I had her do was to make the sounds of this, you know, rep repressing of this, uh, this uh, dislike, uh, coming up with that sound finding that within herself. But for most people, making funny, weird sounds is not an easy, it's embarrassing. So the gong is there to support that person finding and then being able to really, you know, let it loose, kind of like singing in the car with the radio on. You know, it makes it just freeze somebody up to be able to make that noise and make that sound and move that out of their body. And then we find a sound that, and I, and I ask them to come up with a sound that is really, uh, it could start in their head or in their heart, that is really a magnificent and beautiful sound uh, to neutralize that and to come up with that sound. Uh, and then I'll probably use uh, a different instrument to help support that piece and that person uh, was able to, at that then, that person was able to, before she went to chemotherapy, she would make these sounds of, you know, letting go of her, her distress about going. And then when she was there getting chemotherapy, she was able to hear the beautiful sound that she had created. She, she didn't have to make it even out loud because it's in there, it's imprinted in your cellular memory. So all she had to do was think about that sound and that really helped her to receive that treatment in a much uh, kinder way. Yeah, it, it brings me to the, the discussion we had before the uh, you know, broadcast that uh, we were speaking of the late uh, Mitch, uh, Mitch Gaynor, Dr. Mitch Gainer, who was, you know, worked as a medical oncologist and integrative medicine doctor in New York. 
And um, I think in your book, you also, another wonderful, and I love the fact that you have given credit to all the great pioneers in this field. Um, but he says, if we accept the sound as vibration, we know that vibration touches every part of our physical being, which is just what you were saying. Then we understand that sound is heard not only through our ears, but through every cell of our body. Yeah. And, um, and that's exactly why it's so important. And one, so he says, one reason, you know, sound um, heals on a physical level is because it so deeply touches and transforms us on the emotional and spiritual planes. And sound can redress imbalances on every level of uh, physiologic functioning and can play a positive role in the treatment of virtually any medical disorder. And we know that his research, you know, through sound vibration sort of showed the, you know, the, the dysrhythmic, you know, uh, motion was that was found in cancer cells. And I know that you have worked in therapy settings um, in San Diego and probably elsewhere as well. And, and you've worked with a lot of PTSD issues with veterans and such. Give us more of an idea of how you just did give an example of that with that particular cancer, but how much um, is this movement going now into the medical field with integrated methods such as, you know, sound therapy and particularly for cancer patients? Where do you see this going in the future? Oh, I see it going that it's going to be regulated in the future because, and it, it really needs to be there there really needs to be a high standard of how to work with these instruments. And I think that's, you know, that's something that's happened with acupuncture and with other forms of energy medicine. And I think it's going to happen with sound, with sound as well as we raise the bar uh, and, and it is more and more accepted. I have a lot of people who are nurses uh, that come to the trainings um, and that that it's going you know when I worked in the jail system with the incarcerated veterans well it made a huge difference in their lives and with with the cancer patients not one of the things is that there's a big difference between curing and healing and this mm -hmm. is really uh, sometimes it does cure and that's true uh, mm -hmm. but you can't you have to go through a healing to get to a curing. And mm -hmm. sometimes uh, a physical disease is too far gone, as you know, racked too much of your body, uh, and your body can't withstand anymore, but that doesn't mean that you haven't done uh, a lot of healing. And that's, uh, and that's really an important aspect of why sound is getting more and more. I've, I'm more and more going into corporate events uh, to help people get on the same page about things and to to, to start um, to start some kind of a, an agenda or a meeting that they're going to have uh, to have people come in and 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 smooth ruffled feathers within an organization and so I see it all, all I do is see it growing and with my work in France now that's you know it's just explosion exploding there, um, people are very, very interested, and there's a lot more going on in Europe now. So it's just a matter of time. Yes, very much so. And Hospital, the vibration. Go you ahead. Know, hospitals are really doing a lot more to integrate sound uh, into their, uh, into their lots of different um, aspects of yes. what they do. And when you think about it, it was really it has been an ancient medicine of thousands of years old and then it got revisited in the last 40 years i would say yeah. um that people have come to this forefront and you yourself are absolutely one of these pioneers yourself that have brought this information forward and um you know the your book is so essential on many levels of healing i'd love to to um uh, if you could just give a brief um, I kind of introduction about what your course study will be in February that we offer um, oh, yes. some of the people that would perhaps love to join. Sure, um, it's a it's an intensive three days, and over the three days you get to uh, be able to he to start to hear the instrument. It's not about just playing patterns. Uh, it's ab about being able to hear the different the different characteristics of each instrument 
and to begin to understand what it's telling you and then to begin to know what to do about it. So, so I'm introducing uh, uh, the basic uh, fundamental principles of sound healing with each of the, the instruments that I in introduced you today um, and, and leading up to how to practice doing a, an introductory level sound healing session. Uh, okay. So that's just that's the beginning. Um, a lot of people don't hear. They play the instruments, but they don't hear the instruments, mm -hmm. and that's really so important. And mm -hmm. if they hear the instrument, they don't know what to do about it. So mm -hmm. I will help you, uh, whoever comes to that workshop, to understand. When you place, if I place a bowl on somebody's heart, and I know that that bowl has five different harmonics but the high harmonic is not coming out of that bowl that gives me an indication of what's going on in that person's body and I have to know what to do to help bring up that high harmonic maybe it's the low harmonic maybe that person needs a lot of grounding and that low harmonic is non-existent that's going to help me determine what direction I play and what elements I bring into the, pro uh, the whole protocol, the whole session, to help bring up a sense of grounding. Mm -hmm. So that's the kinds of things that people just begin uh, to learn and understand. Yeah, beautiful. And their relationship also with the, the instrument itself to themselves and also to the, the patient as well. Yeah. Uh, so that there's a, a communication that is free and as you say it's bringing out the awareness the movement and the ultimately the harmony you know through this tool from you to them and them to you and that equal reciprocity and there's a lot of practice needed. that's needed afterwards once you once you get it yes and then you're also going to have a wonderful uh, sound experience um next week at CIHS yes on the 19th with my partner Richard Rudis on the Earth Gong and he's fabulous Oh, so cute. I hope to see a lot of people uh, there because it's it's a wonderful transformative event. Yeah, wonderful. So Nicole, I think that um, maybe you'd like to give us a little bit idea about the book of um, of you know of Dion's and talk about the possibility for them to win a book. Yes, yes. Hi everybody. Thanks so much. That was such an interesting conversation, and it really expanded my awareness uh, and uh, the, the depth and the breadth that sound healing is, right? There's so much that goes behind the scenes and there's so much behind it uh, and really a form of powerful energy work. So I really enjoyed your conversation. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'll share my screen here. Um, and here is uh, Dion's book. Ancient Sounds for a New Age, and uh, she has generously offered to give a free ebook copy to the highest donation for today's event. Uh, you can donate by um, clicking, uh, or excuse me, texting 801-801 or to uh, CIHS, and um, that's really a convenient way to do that. I also put a, a um, link to our uh, online donation platform where you can donate as well. So. And then um, next we have uh, the concert that you mentioned for next week. That's going to be in person. We are so excited to start uh, hosting in-person again events again this year. Uh, actually, Dion was one of our first um, live uh, instructors, uh, at, uh, musicians that came in June, and we're so happy to have her back in person. So that's next uh, Thursday evening. Um, at CIHS. Don't forget to bring your yoga mat. Yes, bring your mm -hmm. yoga mat and pre-register, please. Uh, good, and Dion and I will both be there as well as Richard. And I haven't had a chance to experience his gong yet, but I, I've heard it's very powerful, yes. <laughs> And then uh, again, a weekend um, training with Dion is coming up in February. Um, and again, I, 
popped all those links to more information and registration in the chat box. Um, this is really a fantastic opportunity to study with Dion, a world-renowned teacher. So we are so excited to have her here. Yeah. And um, now I'd just like to pause and see if anybody has any questions for Dion or any questions about CIHS and our offerings. Um, we also offer academic programs. Um, we are accredited university since 2021, and we have degree programs in integral health um, and psychology and integral noetic sciences. Um, so if you'd like any information on our degree programs, um, you can email me and I'd be happy to uh, pass you in the right direction. But we have a few more people in the audience. It looks like a few have left for the afternoon, but let us know if you have questions. There is a function in the um, Q&A box. You can type your question or if you would like to um, speak directly with Dion, I can give you an opportunity to talk and maybe discuss any of the points that were brought up today. I really enjoyed that beginning meditation that took me just right into this moment. And I even got kind of like little tinglys happening throughout my body. So it was definitely affecting some energy within my system. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, these uh, workshops or webinars rather are going to continue throughout 2023. Um, we have an exciting lineup of local authors, uh, at least within the next couple months. And then we might expand to um, some global authors from coast to coast, some people from the East Coast as well. Um, but all are um, renowned experts in their fields and we've been so fortunate to launch this 2023 series today with Dion and with our very uh, distinguished trustee Anne-Marie. Thank you both so much for being here. Uh, so if there's no more questions or if there's not any questions we might wrap things up for today. Well, Do you have anything else to add Anne-Marie or Dion? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dion, maybe you can just tell us a little bit where people can find you. Um, yeah, you know, and uh, where they can come and, and uh, you know, look at your website and such. So my web, thank you. My website is Sound Energy Healing. Uh, so you can go to Sound Energy Healing and for the school, it's the Tibet, the Tibetan Bowl School .com. Great. Wonderful. Tibetan Bowl School, www Tibetan Bowl School .com. Great. And it's oh, wonderful. And as somebody who has studied sound and also a very big proponent of this work, I just want to say thank you, Dion. Your work is a, a great contribution in this field. And we feel very lucky that you came today to speak about it uh, with CIHS. And please, people, if you want to get a real fundamental, you know, great, what we call um, sound, you know, fundamental course, this is the course to take. Yes. Thank you so much. Agreed. I echo all of that. And thank you all that came today. And this recording is going to be available within a, um, a few days. I'll send it out to our community. And we look forward to seeing you again next month for our new series, Great. Teachings, Conversations in Consciousness. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dion. Thank you, Anne-Marie. We'll see you next month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.